Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 47th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand from a $22 buy-in tournament I played online a while back. I don't know anything about any of the players, but we'll go ahead and get right to the action. So here a guy raises from early position with 10,000 chips, and this could be a pretty wide range of hands. Notice how he's making it just a slightly larger raise than a min-raise. And you'll find that very amateur players usually make a min raise with a strong hand and then like three times the blind or 2.5 times the blind raise with their other hands, you know, their medium strength hands. But whenever you see a guy making it slightly more than a min raise, you should generally assume that's just going to be a standard raise size because a lot of people will just make a slightly more than a min raise with their entire range, which I think is a pretty good strategy. So I'm not really concerned. This is a super strong range. The only thing that's making me think that he may have a good hand is because he's raising from early position. But... I think this could pretty much be anything, especially at a relatively deep stack table. He rolls around this short stack who goes all in, and he's not particularly short. He does have about 15 big blinds. So I think he could have a decently wide range. I think it's probably something like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, maybe king-queen, and then a lot of pairs, maybe down to like sevens or something like that, maybe even sixes. So it folds around to me. And against that range that I just gave you, ace-king's going to be in great shape. So if it was just us two in the hand, we'd have a very easy call. However, there's this other guy in the hand, and we have to figure out what his opening range is and if we can get him off of a lot of that opening range. And I think the answer is pretty much yes. Anytime you have ace-king, you really do not need to fear your opponent having aces or kings that often because I have an ace and a king in my hand. That's going to make it much more difficult for my opponent to actually have aces or kings. So if this player does happen to call me, the second position guy, it's probably going to be something like queens or jacks or another ace-king, and if that's the case, it's not really the end of the world because we have lots of equity. So, I, I think we need to play this hand. So now the question is, should I shove, should I call, should I min-raise? And, and that's because this player has more chips. He still has chips behind here. If I call, I think that this guy will call along with something like jacks, tens, basically every time. I think with ace-king, he'll definitely call. We may be able to get him to call with ace-queen, but probably not. And so I don't really think calling is going to induce my, this player to call too incredibly wide. Especially since he is raising to a decent raise size. That makes me think he's probably competent. So because of that, I think we need to re-raise just to go ahead and get him off of his, most of his range. Or try to get him off the majority of his range, like ace-king if he does have that. Um, and then stuff like jacks and tens. Because we do want him to fold jacks and tens because they have 50% you know, equity. And anytime your opponent has 50% equity, you certainly want him to get out of the hand whenever you're going all in and trying to isolate this short stack. So I, I do think we need to raise. I think a min-raise and an all-in are going to accomplish both the same thing. If I do min-raise, it may induce this guy to continue, which, again, I don't really want to do. So I think I'm going to shove here. I think shove's pretty standard and good. We do end up getting it all in against ace-queen from the shorter stack. And, of course, like I said, he played his hand perfectly fine. If this guy raises, I'm jamming ace-queen all day. So just an unlucky spot for him. But he gets a queen, so I lose. And I, I've been reading a, a decent amount of text by amateurs lately about poker. I'm trying. To, I'm really trying hard to figure out how the amateur players play and how they think. And a lot of players will think, "Oh, you messed up and let let him outdraw you." You know, I mean, you, you really don't need to be concerned whenever guys outdraw you. Of course, this spot's totally irrelevant because he got it all in first. You know, you can't make a guy fold when he's all in. But um. You really don't need to worry about getting outdrawn. When you get outdrawn, you have to realize that you got a lot of equity and good, and that's all that really matters. And if you do that consistently, you will be a very big winner in all forms of poker, as long as you're not blinding off and waiting for only perfect situations. Um, one other thing I want to mention, I guess, is that whenever it gets back to this opponent after I shove, what hand should he actually be calling with? And I think that's a tough one. It depends on how wide I'm shoving here. If I'm shoving stuff like ace-queen... Obviously, you should call with ace-king, but if I'm only shoving ace-king here and big pairs, then he really does need a very strong hand to continue. Probably something like queens, and I guess he can call off with ace-king. So queens, ace-king, and king, aces, kings, queens, and ace-king, and that's really about it. And you will see a lot of guys, particularly in the lower state games, call off much wider than that. So whenever one guy goes all in and another guy shoves, you really do need a strong hand to continue, especially whenever it's for like 40 big blinds. It's not like this is a, you know... 12 big blind reshove where you're getting great odds. Here he's not getting good odds, and he just pretty much has to fold everything. So that's that for this episode. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.